well. All right then. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So normally we start the video going, uh, you know, inside the shop, but right now I gotta go somewhere. So right now I got my e-brake on it. It doesn't help my case, but right now we got a really dope car at the shop to be working on. And uh, I started on it yesterday, got a little bit of a head start, but it was just nothing I wanted to film. And it was just way too stinking hot and it's gonna be hot today. So I'm just not even honestly in the mental state to be working right now, but I know stuff needs to get done. And you know, I just kind of feel like filming because I, I just enjoy making videos. So right now I'm filming on my phone again because I keep forgetting to bring my camera. Like honestly, I've just been in like a mental funk lately and uh, it's just been hard to find motivation to do much of anything. Yeah, I don't know what it's been. I just, uh, it, I think it's more just like the business stuff that's been stressing me out. Um, Cause you know, I've been trying to get more and more legit. You know, I finally, like I mentioned a few videos ago, got LLC, you know, got all established. Uh, you know, today I was finally able, after like a month uh, waiting, be able to set up a business check or yeah, business checking account. So I just put money in there. So now it just seems a, a lot more real. And I feel like to me mentally, the stress of like, I really gotta, you know, get my butt in gear type thing is starting to hit. And then it's just been, you know, just a kind of a weird week with just people in general. Um, I don't know, just growing pains, I suppose, more than anything. And I'm just learning how to process it. But, you know, we're gonna have a good day. And again, videos are just my outlet personally. So this is where uh, I'm just making a, a vlog just to, you know, more than anything, hear myself talk and hopefully help somebody else in the process or give somebody some, some sort of entertainment. So right now I'm working on my buddy's uh, Evo. We'll show you that once we get back to the shop. And I gotta run to the most expensive car parts store in the world really quick and grab a silicone coupler. Uh, for some charge pipe, so let's get down there. Well, just left the store, and for the single silicone coupler, that that boy was fifty-eight dollars and twenty cents. I hate it here, but whatever. Let's get back to the shop. I ain't paying for it. Okay, back here at the shop now. You know, got the BMW. If you didn't see I, the video, I finally got the exhaust built for it. Um, yeah, so this is my buddy Chapo's Evo. You've probably seen this thing if you're a longer time watcher of the channel. This was on the channel once or twice a while back, not for any work or anything, but just for some fun. We, at one point, had rented out a track for a day, a smaller one. Uh, this thing's nicknamed Frank the Tank, and, uh, you know, for multiple reasons, but basically the car's been down for like two years. The last time it was on the channel, I was pulling the motor on it with Doge. And uh, yeah, the issue was, I think something to do with the clutch, but then he ended up, you know, cause he just, he's worked for his money. So he likes to spend hard, play hard, you know, work hard, that whole spiel. Um, so what turned from, I think a clutch job, I don't fully remember, has now turned into a fully built motor, you know, dog box, you know, brand new, basically everything. So it's here getting the final touches on some of the fab work. Um, and then it's, you know, yeah, I'm putting on a few other things like, we got some Megan control arms back there to do in the rear end stuff. Um, but yeah, so the motor is built to my understanding for like 1400 horsepower. You know, he's only looking for like eight cause he has AC, he has power steering, he has full interior, you know, he just cause he can, he wanted to. And now that's what he's done. And now that's where I come in. So I already got the front bumper mounted because that was not attached yesterday. So he had, it, it is, it looks like an OE style bumper, but it's actually a fiberglass one. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, it's kind of a pain to work with. Um, but basically all I was doing was installing these quick release tabs up here. And uh, you know, the bumper fits pretty decent. There is a little bit of, uh, you know, shimming to be done and adjustment, but after it leaves here, I think it's going to paint and body to, you know, repair, well, paint this door back here since that was swapped out a while ago. But yeah, so for today's agenda, I'm going to try and knock out some pretty good stuff here so uh i needed that coupler because if you come up here uh where are we at so there's a 45 here i have to run the 45 to clearance for the bumper and so then i can loop this around but then i tried putting a straight coupler onto here but then when the pipe comes out it's going to be hitting the bolt right here so i needed a 45 to kick it down this way so for this morning's agenda let me pop a squat so i'm not stand all awkwardly is uh, I got to make the charge pipe to go from here over and up into that. So the rest of it's titanium. You can see it's the full Archer fabrication kit, which you Evo guys or DSM guys will know who that is. Outstanding quality stuff. But uh, 
yeah, got to make that. Got to make a bracket for a cooler over there at another time. Got to make try and make an intake for the uh, uh, turbo. And then, you know, we got some more work to do. We'll go over it as we go. For now, let's try and get this piece made up. I just realized that this coupler is a two and a half to a three it's coming off the intercooler so i'm just gonna have to make a little flared piece because you know the rest of it's gonna be two and a half it's gonna be you know kind of random but this is really all i was supplied with worst case scenario if he ends up not liking it because the odd difference then i can always change it later but until then uh this is what i was kind of you know told to work with so what i got here is a three inch piece that'll go into there and then I got an extra two and a half here. I'm just gonna flare this to match that on my little, uh, you know, flaring tool right there. And then that'll just be that. And then I'll just trim it all and make it all fit. All right, I just finished welding this thing up. Got my cooler just chilling me off, you know. Everything's cooling off right now. It is, it is just uh, it's a little toasty in here. So yeah, this piece should be all good to go. Uh, once it's cooled to the touch, then I will clean out the inside because you always want to clean out the insides of your pipes after you weld them if you can, because there's usually debris in there of some sort, whether it be like, you know, saw material or, you know, whatever they have. So that would be that. So my checklist is on the windshield. I can start checking things off. But uh, yeah, I think I'm more or less done on the underside of the front. So I'm gonna end up, once it's on, dropping this thing down and we'll start working on the top side stuff. We've got the charge pipe installed down below. 
Uh, yeah, you, you can barely see it down there. So next up, since I still got the welder set up for the aluminum, I'm going to start working on the radiator setup. Now, essentially, the issue here is that the wastegate right here, we're worried that it's going to be too close or cook. I can clearance that, but he asked me to rebuild it. So I built this one before. Obviously, here's my badge, a nice little stainless setup. And then I was able to talk him into doing AN lines just because, you know, it looks really clean. But now I'm mildly concerned the AN stuff is going to fit solely because the fittings are so stinking big. I've never dealt with dash 20 line before. And um, the fittings that you use to attach it all are really bulky. So these guys right here are just way larger than, you know, I anticipated them to be. Oh. So ideally I'm trying to get the, ho yeah. So I don't even think this is gonna fit, to be honest. These things are just way too big. Because the AN line is going to be back there, and then this one's going to be, like, over here. Because I can only suck this over to the radiator so much. So, yeah, I don't even know if I can fit uh, AN line set up over here. Like, or, I'm sorry, a hose setup. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But in the meantime, i got to drain the radiator. Kind of annoyed because uh, I was over at the shop where this car came from the other week, and, you know, they knew it was coming to me next, and I was going to modify the radiator, and they still put regular coolant in there and not just you know distilled water so um onward and wayward i'm gonna drain this thing and i'll get moving i did not have the camera going because i thought it would be a little bit cleaner but this morasso oil pan just completely screwed me and it uh you know made a, a blue lagoon so i'm, I'm kind of butthurt because now i gotta clean this up um i lied i'm really butthurt stupid All right, so radiator's out. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run a bunch of water through this outside really quick, finish cleaning it out. Uh, and then I'm gonna test fit it, and then we're gonna mark up where we need to trim. I mean, I already know where I wanna cut back here, and then I'll pull the fan shroud off to weld it up. But uh, I just need to figure out where to trim the uh, material over there on the table. So yeah, I'm gonna wash this and move on. So this is what I'm looking like. Uh, this is, you know, the same size as that inch and a half outer diameter. So what we're going to do, I already kind of eyeballed it and it's pretty obvious. I need to, you can kind of see where the, the die made its crease in the bend, like right before this little line. So I need to trim that right about there. I mean, wide angle you guys up. So you can see if I set it, you know, pretty much right there, that's going to suck it in right where I need it to. If I trim it back as close as I can to being flush with this guy. So I'm going to Go ahead, trim this down a little bit, and uh, yeah, it'll be all right. And then we'll shoot it over like that. And then I can worry about trimming it from here after that.
I'm running into an issue um, right here. Uh, this is the piece that I was gonna use. You know, it fits up good, clears this hose, but the only thing it doesn't really clear or may not clear is access to this bolt right here for the fan shroud. Now, not that that's necessarily a big deal, but if this ever goes to get changed, you know, I could leave this bolt out and it's still pretty solid, but the only other option I can think of is to trim this piece off and then trim this off and then move it over somewhere else, maybe directly under here and closer. So that way there's not a washer in between as like a spacer and stuff. Cause even with that, it's still gotta be sucked in. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead, probably mark this all up, get it all tacked in. But before I do that, I'm probably gonna end up trying to trim off this edge of the fan shroud and uh, relocate it. that bead roll man that's my first time actually getting to use the tool for its intended purpose without practice and that thing turned out mint so dope all right i'm gonna let that cool and then i can come over here and then i can tack this piece on and then that piece that i just welded goes onto this piece which then has the bead rolled in to fit between these two Well, you know, radiators modified, it was a little tricky. And you know, that one bolt that I was talking about, I was able to barely fit it in. You kind of, you got to finesse it with the flathead a little bit, but it will slip in. Um, so I'm just going to leave it alone. And uh, yeah, just got to go get some radiator hose or have him bring someone. He brings me some coolant. And uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to probably move on to the waste gates now because you know, that I just made clearance for it. So uh, the only thing that I'm really stressing though is this, uh, uh, the intake for the turbo i just don't know how i'm gonna fit it it's just too tight i mean look at that somehow you know grams of wastegate sitting on the turbo but somehow got to fit a four inch intake in this little area to get a filter somewhere over here like i don't mind welding all the pie cuts in the world but i just between the spall fan and stuff there's just no room but then there's nowhere to put the spall fan because there's already fans on the front here and the intercooler so it's like just not a whole lot of you know options here but anyways this turned out great i love having that bead roller now that makes everything look so much better but i think i've about had it for the day i'm a little toasty i'm gonna go ahead you know loosely bolt the wastegate back up kind of give myself a head start visually for tomorrow and uh you know i'll just end the video here hopefully you guys enjoyed it i know this car is definitely you know a little bit out of the realm of what i normally do i've had some cool cars in here but this is just like this is the most built car i believe i've ever had so it's pretty it's pretty sweet so uh shout out to my buddy chapo for you know bringing it by and um, anyways guys, thanks for spending some time out of your day. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you've considered subscribing by now. You know, I try to post what I can when I can. Uh, you know, I just don't want to get too repetitive. That's, and I do a lot of exhaust jobs. That's why when I go, you know, a week without filming, it's because I had mostly exhaust work, if anything, that week. So, you know, but now that we got the BMW, whatever. Anyway, whatever. Do what you love. Forget about the rest. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.